bodybuilding as opposed to soul lifting or soul building. Well, of course, in orthodoxy, this is what's destined to happen to the body. Of course it is, whether you're orthodox or not. This is a lovely picture in um, Elder Joseph's letters, which, as he was writing, he did tell the people that he was writing to, um, copy them, copy them down, send them back to me, and I'll write more. That way you'll have a nice notebook of good writings and 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 things to follow and things to live by. This is Abbas is always at the grave of Alexander the Great. This is where all the greats are destined to end up. This is where the gym bod is destined to end up. But that's not the end of the news, of course. Destined for resurrection, for eternal life, but not through the gym or at least not through the gym alone, that's for sure. 64th letter. The heart does not tolerate divisions. Thou shalt bow down to thy God alone, and him thou shalt serve. Being absolutely focused is what people like David Goggins thrive on, and it's been the secret of their success. Having a big enough why, you can achieve anything, he says in his talks, in his inspirational talks. He is very inspirational. If, if sometimes I listen to him and my, and my wife will say, you, know, you seem a bit angry, you know, maybe there is a slight, there is some difference of approach for sure. The orthodox way is a way of humility and relying on the mercy of God. But that doesn't mean to say we just lie in our beds and chill out and wait for God to, to beam us up. We must collaborate earnestly relying on on with with true faith and zeal the mercy of god he's speaking of noetic prayer here of prayer in the inner man in the inner life and he says the following for when grace overshadows and the breath of god which is our soul is a flame with love, it is uplifted, a divine union occurs. Then man is so assimilated with God that he can neither be recognized nor distinguished from him, like the sun and its light or fire and iron when they are united. For the inbreathing and grace spring forth from the same source, our sweet God. I put it to you when this happens. All desire to be training twice a day and, and stuffing your face with chicken to build a body disappears because you discover the absolute sublime beauty of the soul and it's the and, and how proximate it is with God and how it's opened up a whole new universe of potentiality and love. Oh how good our God, our kind God, he continues. How compassionate. He does not have any self-interest or any need of man as the most perfect one. But since out of his great love he wanted to impart his most perfect gifts, he created all of creation, and having formed man, he made him king and bestowed everything upon him. God seeks only one thing, that you honor him, love him, keep his commandments, acknowledging that he is your maker. Now he's going to talk about not having a divided heart, and this is the hardest thing. I say this as an ex-monk, this is the hardest thing not to have in the world, is a divided heart, because we live in a very divided world. He does not want you to divide his glory and to worship other things instead of him. He does not want you to love anything more than him. For this reason, when he gave his commandments to Moses through the divinely written law, he said, Hear, O Israel, the Shema, I shall love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, with all thine heart with all thy might, with all thy mind. And he goes on to say, you know, God does not tolerate this division. So my beloved child, do you understand? He has left no room for your love to incline anywhere else. It's so easy for our loves to incline somewhere else. I'll just have a wee bit of that worldliness, that worldly vibe, that gym bod vibe. 
and a wee bit of the, the spiritual on a Sunday. And the heart is divided. I'll just have a wee bit of that worldly conversation and a wee bit of the spiritual. And our heart is divided. Let's continue. He has left no room for your love to incline anywhere else, but absolutely all the desire of your soul should be to love the Lord. In this manner, his great will, his great will dwell upon you. Sorry, his grace will de um, dwell upon you. The heart does not tolerate divisions. Thou shalt bow down to thy God alone, and him shalt thou serve. And this is such a joy, he says. What a joy for the miserable clay. How many good things the Lord gives us. This is true soul lifting. This is true ascesis, exercise for body and soul. For body and soul. May the Lord grant us through the prayers of the great mother of God and through Elder Joseph the Hesychast to have a truly undivided heart and soul lifting the body true body building through the power of the united soul in Jesus Christ Amen forgive me hope that's useful in some way as I wrestle with my own divisions out here in the world